Welcome back to part two with our conversation with designated drinker, Mags is what we call her now, <laughs> Salazar Porzio. Did I get that right? You did. Woohoo! <laughs> she is the curator from the Division of Home and Community Life at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History. I got that one right finally. Um, so if you've missed part one, go ahead and belly back up to that bar and give it a listen first. We promise to save a seat right here for you. So in part one, you shared um, your unique family history, and we touched a little bit about what it means to be a curator at the Smithsonian and a little bit about Day of the Dead. But really, right now, I really want to jump right in. Let's dispel some of these misconceptions because it is such a beautiful holiday, and it's very important to me. And I want everyone to understand and appreciate it. So please, let's jump right in. Absolutely. Well, you know, as, as I mentioned, Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, is not Halloween. It's not on the same day. <laughs> um, you know, Halloween. It's not even the same day. <laughs> no, <I know>. it's <laughs> not. Um, but it happens around the same time, and it does have skeletons, and you know, and, and I feel like that's where the peop where people get confused, maybe. A little bit. Yeah. Um, but Halloween is October 31st. It is. And Dia de los Muertos is November 1st and sometimes also November 2nd. Yeah. And, um, and the history there is actually really interesting. Um, you know, Dia de los Muertos actually is rooted in, in Mexican tradition, but also Northern Central America. Um, the Aztecs, the Mayans, and the Toltecs, they actually, you know, celebrated, um, you know, the lives that have gone before them. They celebrated their ancestors um, in the fall, and this was kind of linked to the cyclical nature of, um, you know, the crops yeah. of agriculture. Yeah. And so, you know, you would harvest the crops in the fall, and then, you know, from the kind of buried um, seeds and, and, the, and the dead crops would grow new in the spring. And, uh, and so, you know, the, this was just something that they celebrated. And then, you know, the Spanish came. Yeah. And uh, with their uh, with the Catholic traditions yes. <laughs> and uh, the Catholic holy days of, of all saints on November 1st and all souls on November 2nd um, kind of got combined with this same kind of tradition for celebrating, you know, your ancestors. Good old assimilation. Yeah, good old conquest and coloni colonialism, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah, a lot a lot came with that, obviously. But, um, but, you know, we celebrate now Day of the Dead and Dia de los Muertos on November 1st and second and it, it's kind of combining those different traditions um, you know which happened happened a lot um, with with Spanish uh, Catholicism and, and those traditions um, and uh, anyway so you know we think about Dia de los Muertos as a celebration of life you yeah. know and and you are um, celebrating your ancestors and and thinking about them and and uh, welcoming them back and you can do that with ofrendas or altars um, where you maybe will place a picture of your loved one. Um, and then the other thing about altars is that you have to put things like that were important to them, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and that's kind of the fun about it. Like now that I have, um, I have a little one, he's six, and we decorate the altars together. And, nice. you know, we put up... Um, uh, for my grandpa, you know, he, he was a beer drinker, so we make sure we have cerveza there. <laughs> um, and also his pipe, because, you know, you kind of have the pipe for him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you're supposed to put something for, um, to celebrate kind of like um, the uh, earth, wind, fire, and water. And uh, and so, you know, you can actually put water out. Yeah. We put beer. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I put... Uh, Bourbon out for my mom. There you go. <laughs> yeah, my mom. I, I put bourbon out for my mom. Um, I put fav my dad's favorite cookies um, because it was different. My dad wasn't a drinker, so that was his. So I, I do an altar every year for my parents, and oh, um, typically it's those typical th those things. I think about what they liked and. Um, I, uh, you know, someone's like, you should put cigarettes out of your mom. And I was like, no, no, that, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we put a pipe for my grandpa. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, so you put out the mm -hmm. things that they like. And, mm -hmm. and part of that is also telling stories about them and, and remembering them. Um, for, for wind, a lot of people put out, like, the papel picado, the mm -hmm. cut paper. Yep. Um, for Earth, usually people will put out bread or food that they liked. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's the sweet bread, uh, pandulce, that people like to put out. Um, 
And then um, for fires, sometimes people light a candle. I have lots of candles, so, lots of flowers. Lots of candles, lots of flowers. Marigolds, mm -hmm. um, Sempasuchil, which is like the kind of indigenous marigold flower. Um, those have this incredible scent and color. And so, you know, the, the scent and the color is supposed to draw them to welcome yeah. them home. I, I guess I just put out, I put out flowers that my mom like. I do put marigolds out, but I don't know that they, I get really scented. Mine don't seem to have a lot of scent. Yeah, you know, Maybe sometimes. I gotta try. Yeah, like I'm just getting the wrong ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes they they are really, really scented, and sometimes they're not. It's like a really nice sweet scent. My grandma, though, she really liked um, hydrangeas, so mm -hmm. usually I'll put hydrangeas hydrangeas out for her instead of marigolds. Um, Maybe your mom and my your grandmother and my mother are hanging out because my mom <laughs> my mom loved hydrangeas as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful, beautiful flowers. So um, marigolds, though, I find you can't find them here in yeah. like. DC, Virginia area. They're I'm hard like to find. looking everywhere for them. Yeah. Gina, maybe you should plant some of those out at the farm so we could just come harvest them. <laughs> I was, was going to say there's a hybrid of a chrysanthemum and a marigold that most people call chrysanthemums in this in this country, but they're definitely South American, and they are like kind of like a like a, a fusion of the two, and they're super scented. So I wonder if that's what you're looking for. Interesting. Like they stand, like they're so strong, like the smell. They're like us. They're hapa. They're hapa there you flowers. Go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is all about mixture, right? <laughs> they're really good. I have um, edible. I use a lot of edible marigolds, and they're really scented and like food and stuff. So I grow them, but they're like like a little like like maybe that big in the head. But the ones I'm talking about are huge heads. They're like this big. Oh wow! Yeah. And you can get them, and they're really they're beautiful. But I was just thinking, like, how wonderful of a tradition to just, um, you know, remember to just do it on one day. Like, on my father's, the, on my parents' birthdays, we always do those kind of things. We have, like, my father's favorite dinner or my mother's favorite dinner with my kids. We talk about them on the day that they, they, they um, on their birthdays. But I never thought about, like, doing that for them and, like, teaching them about, like, you know, more of their great-grandparents and stuff. They don't know what their great-grandparents it's just such a beautiful um, way to tell the story and the kids to remember because, you know, ancestors die, the memories die with them with the last generation that can remember them. Yeah. yeah. So I find it very fascinating to do it like that. Yeah, I always put a picture up, especially because a lot of people don't know, would not know my parents. Um, and I, in people, I, I have some people, I have some people who are in another religion in my family that it's, they, they like, oh, it's Satan. I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> no. And I'm like, no, it's because they, you know, I always say it's welcoming back the people who loved you in life and that they still love you, even though they're not here with you. That's that you beautiful. bring them back into your home and they, your house again is filled with that same love. Absolutely. And you know, that that's the that's what we do. Um, and we, we tell stories of my grandma, my grandpa. Um, my, my grandma never got to meet my son, but yeah. she would have loved him. So I tell him that and tell him how, you know, amazing she was. And, and it's it's those memories that like keep them alive in, in, in your house and in your hearts. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we, and we also believe, like I firmly believe that my grandpa comes and visits us as like a monarch butterfly during the fall. Oh, that's <laughs> Um, and actually, a lot of people believe that monarchs, um, mm -hmm. they, um, at least, you know, for this tradition, um, this is the first time that uh, the monarchs are arriving in Mexico mm -hmm. um, because of their great migration. And so um, a lot of people think about monarchs as kind of carrying the souls of the dead with yeah. them. Um, and so, but my grandma, she's not a, she's not a butterfly. She's a hummingbird. She comes <laughs> as a hummingbird, yeah, <laughs> to, to go hang out with the hydrangeas. <laughs> my mother just makes noise in my house. She oh. mother always makes noise in my house. She's she's made a lot of loud appearances, which would fit my mother. She was four foot eleven if she were lucky, and she was a small little petite woman. But she she always makes noise. There's always something. I'm like, what the hell was that? Like things that you can, we had three sounds like really like the first one. <laughs> Or well, one of them was my friend. Every time my friend Rosenbelt and Darren are in, my mom comes back. She's there all like she's literally thrown something at me once. <laughs> uh, it was we had a Day of the Dead party. I had this little sculpture, this little wooden sculpture, sitting on top of this thing. It was just decorative, and I was talking to my friend Darren, being a little smart ass. I don't know. We were just joking about something about me cross stitching. I don't know. And that little wooden like Day of the Dead skeleton 
didn't fall forward, which is what gravity would have done. It leapt and hit me because I was standing about three feet away from it what? and it was level with me. Like, so it would have just, physics would say it would just fall. And my friend Darren and Roosevelt watched it and they're like, that thing just flew at you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and immediately, as soon as it happened, I was like, oh, that was my mom telling me to stop lying. <laughs> I kid you not, it is a true, if Ro and Darren were here, they'd swear to it. It was just one of those moments I was like, well, I asked her to come back. <laughs> Careful what you ask for. <laughs> oh, wow. That, you know, I, I do feel like th this is this moment where, um, you, and I, I think this was, was part of the tradition and the belief was that, you know, during this time of year, there's like um, less of a barrier between the dead and the living, right? Yeah. So. Maybe yeah. maybe your mom's taking advantage of that. I think so. <laughs> yeah. So on that note, Gina, what do you think? Well, I think I'm going to make a cocktail. But also, I'm just like, just thinking like, do I want my mom now? I'm thinking like, did you got something thrown at you? She'll definitely get a wooden spoon at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's call it the Pumpkin Queen, I think, is a fun name for this drink. Because you know what? Would you ever think you're going to use marshmallow syrup in a drink? So we're going to go ahead and take, we're going to take two ounces of bourbon. And we're going to pour it into a stirring glass. And then we're gonna take a half an ounce of your pumpkin syrup. Now, if you are somebody that loves it a little bit sweeter, you could do a little bit more. You like it a little less sweeter, a little bit less. Again, you're making these for yourself and your friends, so you could do it the way you like it. Now we're gonna take three dashes of Angostura bitters or something that you might like that's a little bit different. If you have like a, um, you know, a little bit more of a pungent uh, bitters, like blackstrap molasses works really good. I just happen to love Angostura bitters and everything because I just think it's delicious and maybe it's because I'm used to, but I always kind of mix up like two different flavors. And then we're going to take this, fill it with ice three quarters of the way and we are going to stir it for 30 rotations. And again, you want to stir it so that you get the ice to melt. You know, you don't want to, um, you don't want to give it not enough stirring. So if you can, I don't know if you, you can't see because you're in another room. And we are gonna put this over fresh ice, which I have large cubes today. And then we're gonna garnish this with either a pump, you know, you can, you can make this as fun as you want. You could put a marshmallow in there and make it all pumpkin-y, um, but you definitely need like a little uh, hit of citrus. So what I'm gonna do is put a little quarter round of orange on there. And if you want to, you know, if you don't think that you need it, then don't use it. But I totally love it, and I think it's just really fun. A little bit of uh, orange zest, you know, pumpkin, orange, all the things. And then we'll we'll put a. Um, I already lost them. We'll put a marshmallow on. I lost my marshmallows. A marshmallow. But now I'm gonna give you. Now I'm gonna give you the trick, right? You want another last another trick to this? If you have marshmallows and you have this glass and you want to put it on there. One thing that you could do to make the uh, marshmallow stick where you want is kind of just wet it ever so lightly so it becomes glue. And you can stick it onto your glass. And then it will sit there like a little, um, like garnish, like floating in the air. Very magical. <laughs> Gina, that drink is delicious. It is definitely uh, Day of the Dead worthy. <laughs> did you, like, how did you? And then some. Let me see how you stuck your, your pumpkin. How'd you stick your marshmallow? I just cheated. I just cheated and I just cut it. Floating. Because I had already done it. I had already, I did this before you said make them wet and try. I was a little quick on the draw. But I love how you do that. I'm going to try that. That's really cool. So you just dampen them, the, so everyone knows, just dampen the, mush, the marshmallow, I almost said mushroom, and, and attach it to the inside <laughs> of the glass. <laughs> So chop up your mushrooms be. before you eat them, and then <laughs> when you stick, start sticking marshmallows, you stick them all over your head, because you'll be tripping in another planet. Yes, let's do that. Exactly, apparently. Um, you know, here's another here's another thing, too. You know what, I, if you're going to have a Halloween a party or day of the dead party or something like that, and you want to have a little bit of fun, you know, using these, like, beakers and stuff, they're super cheap. They're, like, a dollar, and they're super fun to put them out, even if you're going to do them with, like, you know, wine or whatever you're going to drink. It's just uh, like a fun vessel to bring out during this time of year where you can like get away with being a little quirky. Um, I saw something really cool. Uh, somebody did, um, you know, the clay pots that you, uh, for plants, they did those for yeah. hot drinks. It was very cool, very smart, and they're very cheap. But they have to be glazed. What? 
Uh, I guess they would have to be glazed. Hold on, I, I guess so, but I wasn't really considered about that. I was just watching. <laughs> I, I just loved it. They might have had an insert like, in there, like a, a plastic cup or something. But I just loved it. I was like, that's so cool. I want to have a garden party with with terracotta pots. <laughs> now that you say glaze, that makes a lot more sense. But whatever, you know. As I'll have clay around my around my lips, like what's it, whatever. Well, the other thing is, it would eventually just like leak right out of the out of the. We just absorb into the pot. So, but where are they going to go get a trick? A, the tips and tricks that don't put drinks in terracotta pots. Um. Well. I don't know then. No, I'm just kidding. You do go to designated <laughs> drinker dot show um, for the um, cocktail recipe and tips and tricks, and follow us on Instagram to see the tricks. Um, and you can follow along if you have any questions. Yeah, shoot us a question. We're happy to answer it. Absolutely. So you're gonna um, put that in your uh, on the altar. I could actually make that drink for my mom. That would be a good drink for my mom on the altar. Oh, this is a great idea. Well, my my grandpa, he was a doctor of beer, yes. so he was the first doctor in the family. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he he preferred beer to pretty much anything else, including yeah. water. Yes. Yeah. So so we definitely do beer for that. But I I'm gonna take this and use this <laughs> as my designated <laughs> drink <laughs> for uh, for our Dia de los Muertos celebrations. That's awesome. That's awesome. So. Um, you were saying that there were some things happening at the museum that we might want to mention, some new things that are happening yeah. happening this season. Um, well, we're, we're doing a lot of um, incredible things. Um, we just celebrated um, Latino Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th. And uh, now we have um, Dia de los Muertos celebrations with um, the new National Museum of the American Latino. Mm. Yes, and uh, the National Museum of um, the American Indian. Um, they always have an amazing celebration for Dia de los Muertos. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Jeannie, you should take the girls. Yeah. They would love that. Did you know that? No, I don't know everything that goes on. The Smithsonian has a million things happening at every given moment, which is amazing. I but know. I, and I love that too. It's like my kids, especially like um, they get out of school early sometimes. Like we'll go down to the city and I drag them through a museum and they're like, I don't want to go. And then we get there and then they're like, I don't want to leave. I'm like, you guys are so annoying. However, make your kids smarter and bring them to museums and do all that and support them. Support the museum. It's very important. Yeah, no matter where you live, no matter where, what, where, what part of the country you are in, um, the museum, museums, I mean. Yeah, local or big, yeah. of course. And you can find the little ones. Sometimes you, like, um, in the area I live in, there's a bunch of, like, little tiny museums that, it, you know, you might be done in 30, 40 minutes or maybe a little more. But it's, like, you walk in and if you don't learn something, you're not doing something right. There's got to be something you don't know that you could just, even the smallest tidbit of, you know, history could help. Help us all, I think, just a little bit. All right, Gina. Ooh, it's my question. It's your question. No, is it not? Is it not my question? It is your question. Mm -hmm. I put a little thought into this question, and I pulled up my note because I was like, she's smarter than me, which is <laughs> terrifying. So I had to catch <laughs> her off guard a little bit. So I did my own. Um, so now we're going to know if you listen to the show or not. So in uh -oh. this day and age, you know, everybody identifies – themselves with, uh, you know, a different spirit animal. And you're like, oh, I really made, um, identify myself with the uh, iguana because in Mexican culture, <laughs> it's really known for its learning, its ability to adapt to climate. There you go. That's incredible. If you can say, if you could um, identify yourself as one spirited ingredient, whether it's used in cocktail or food, what would that ingredient be and why does it define you? Oh, wow. Um I don't know. I you know what I love when drinks have a little bit of chili, a little bit of spice to them. So I might identify as some sort of spice. Um, I love that you had garam masala in in this drink, um, but maybe I would go for a little chipotle chili or something for myself. Look at Can that! You, yeah, <laughs> um, and I think it's because I have a fiery personality. Um, but you know, on the outside, uh, it's it's a it's a lovely. Uh, color and a, 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 it, it'll make all the drinks look look nice and uh, and I guess red, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so fiery is. There fiery you go. Is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I tried to I tried to draw some analogies. Didn't work. <laughs> I love that. It's a little earthy, a little yeah, fiery. There you go. Oh, nice. Thank you. It is pretty. So she. <laughs> <laughs> I always have chipotle chili flakes as a regular in my house. I love them. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, 
Here's to another amazing episode. Thank you so much for bringing so much knowledge and helping share what Day of the Dead really is and the beauty behind the holiday. So I greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Salud. Salud. The Designated Drinker Show is produced by Missing Link, a podcast media company that is dedicated to connecting people to intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Also in the Missing Link lineup of podcasts is Roger That, a podcast dedicated to guiding you through the haze of dementia, led by skilled caregivers Bobby and Mike Carducci. Now, if you're looking for a whole new way to enjoy the theater, check out Between Acts, an immersive audio theater podcast experience. Each episode takes you on a spellbinding journey through the works of newfound playwrights, from dramas to comedies and everything in between. Find Missing Link's League of Podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. Please don't forget to subscribe, download, and review the shows. Your review helps our shows reach new audiences. To find out more about Missing Link, visit missinglink.company. That's missinglink.company.